renowned for his no-nonsense approach to the Word of God. Ringing out from his pulpit at the Fonseja Catholic Church, he has become known for his straight talk and brutal honesty. Now that he has been transferred to the Babuno Parish of the Good Shepherd, Father Albert has wasted no time in lending his voice to tackling the ever-increasing problem of crime. He says that there are many contributing factors to crime, but he believes that one such factor is the apparent lack of respect and morality displayed by our leaders. This, he believes, has set a bad example for the nation's young people. We have a breakdown in morality. Mm -hmm. We have a society where we see, you know, um, um, people in society, people who are, um, are supposed to be respectable people in society, you know, they feel they can say to people, say about people what they want, how they want, where they want, you know, and those kind of things. So we've lost a sense of respect for one another. And when the younger persons are seeing that, well, these guys, you know, these people, they don't have respect for each other, we can do it too. So we've lost, a, we've, lost a, we've lost a sense of respect for each other in St. Lucia. Father Albert also believes that when it comes to youth, the responsibility of teaching family values and providing guidance has to start with the parents. He adds that church attendance among young people is at an all-time low and has contributed to a lack of respect for the value of human life. When it comes to young people and church attendance, um, it, is, it is at an all-time low. I mean, you have young persons who come to church and who are involved in church. But again, you know, the, the crime situation, I think part thereof, you know, would be the responsibility of parents. You know, when I was growing up, we had to find ourselves in church. Even if our parents did not come, they would send us to church. Now the parents are making excuses for their children. Oh, Father, they go to school for the whole week. Oh, on a Saturday, they have football and they have tennis and this kind of thing. Sunday is the only day when they get to rest. Hello? We, 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 need, we need to raise our children. And I often say to parents and godparents at baptisms, the same way we give the best schools to our children, the same way we give the best, best health care to our children, the same way we want the best for our children, we should lay a solid foundation as affording our children a relationship with God. You know, but you know, what, what, what do you see around? Many parents do not even know how to have a relationship with God, so they cannot give it to their children either. Many parents, you know, are forced to be out of the homes, you know, for prolonged hours, probably working or other stuff. Who raises those children? The television, the cell phone, they hand them a cell phone, they hand them a tablet, but there's no really parenting going on. And I think that is one of the major issues. Father Albert says that even he has been a target of cyberbullying. He referenced a video circulating on social media featuring a voice which is said to be him making some very disparaging remarks about his congregation. He denies ever making such statements and says that this is testament to a lack of respect towards our fellow man. He recommends that we should go back to the things that will teach young people how to show respect, love, and concern for each other, like uniformed groups such as Boy Scouts, Girls Guides, and the like. He also challenged parents to consider a relationship with God as being just as important as the best schools and the best health care for their children. The young people, they've, most of them, they've lost their way. They don't see the need for church. They don't see the need to, to have a relationship with God. They don't see, all they see is me, myself, and I, what makes me happy, you know, and life has become cheap. So I can take you down. You know, I'll slap you and I'll go to body lay. I'll, I'll chop you and, I'll, and, you know, this is common language. But when we were growing up, you know, this was like taboo. This was like taboo. Two persons would end up in a fight, but it would be fist fight. And after that, they would go for a drink. Now it's the gun and the cutlass. And if somebody's not happy with what you say or the stance you take, they feel they can insult you as they want. So we need to go back to a sense of respect for each other in society. And our leaders need to take responsibility for that as well. And when I say leaders, I mean across the board. You know, need to take responsibility. Church leaders, civil leaders, whoever the leaders are, we have to take responsibility because somewhere along the line, 
we dropped the ball. He says that many leaders seem to be afraid to tackle the problem head on, but says that we have no choice if we love our country. He called on everyone to put our shoulders to the wheel, get our hands dirty, and bring Fair Helen back to a place where we show love and respect to each other. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News, I am Eldridge Charles. Charles report leader Nas into this hour's Beyond the Headlines segment. The outspoken Catholic priest, Father Albert Smith, best known for his frank, tell it like it is, no nonsense sermons over the past five years at the Soufra uh, Fosse Jacques uh, Parish. He has been uh, reassigned, now serving at the Good Shepherd Parish in Babano, and guess what? As you could well imagine, St. Lucia, he has wasted no time in bringing the same fire and sincerity to his new parish. Father Albert, thanks for waking up early. Good morning. Good morning to you and good morning, St. Lucia. Waking up early is part of the job, so that's normal life for us. Nice, nice. Nice to have you on um, this very important time of our nation's development. Let me start off. Um, why are so many people so silent with all what's happening in the society? And we note the, over recent weeks that the church is playing a more active role and speaking out more. But across the board, when you look at St. Lucia, our population seems rather silent with all the mayhem that's happening on, on the streets. Why? Well, I think, you know, people are silent for a number of reasons. You know, um, one, I think our people are not brave enough, you know, um, to confront the reality and to deal with it and to be outspoken. Mm -hmm. Because persons, you know, sometimes when you speak the truth, there are, there are repercussions and people are afraid of for their lives. People are being, um, afraid of being branded and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think two people are silent because people are afraid of standing up alone. You know, sometimes, you know, we, while we may see the problem and we may speak about it behind closed doors, but then to openly address it, you know, most times you stand alone. And it has happened to me, you know, before, mm -hmm. before I was a priest, you know, while in training for priesthood, you know, sometimes we, we recognize an issue and we decide, okay, we're going to address it collectively. And then at the point when you address it and the person who's supposed to back you up, they all get cold mm -hmm. feet and those kind of things. So I think it's for a number of reasons. Um, but I think the whole issue of violence, I think, you know, there's fear, you know, in person because you don't know, you speak out and people may come for you and all of those kind of things. You speak up and then persons may misinterpret what you say and all of those kind of things. So people probably choose to remain quiet. Yeah. Thanks for that explanation. But um, we appreciate with the quietness, the social decay continues and it will get to a point where, where it will evidently rotten. Um, if this continues where we all don't take collective responsibility, do you think that we run the risk of becoming uh, perhaps a failed state or lawless society? I think to a certain extent we are at that already. Um, I think, you know, what we need to do is to recognize that we've dropped the ball somewhere. And when I said we, I mean everybody in St. Lucia past governments, previous governments, past administrations of the church, previous, um, you know, um, present administrations of the church and church leaders. And when I talk about church, I mean church across the board. I'm not only referring to the Catholic church, but I'm referring to church because, you know, we must admit, you know, while we feel we probably, we've done um, something, but I don't think we've done enough. And all of us, we've dropped the ball somewhere. And while we were dropping the ball, you know, this problem, this issue, um, has been festering. Yeah. So I think as St. Lucian, we need to recognize that we, all of us, we've dropped the ball somewhere and it is time that we, 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 we regain that consciousness that, hey, there is a problem festering and that we need to do something about it collectively. Mm -hmm. Father, let, let's start to pick up the ball this morning, um, if only just a start. We know the issues um, of societal decay how do we start to fix it? More policing, more social programs? How do we return to the, the St. Lucia that we grew up knowing and loving, where people showed respect and love for their fellow man? I think, you know, we need to, we need, we need to start back with putting God 
at the center of everything. I think um, to a great extent, we have we've thrown God out. And what I mean, what I mean by that is that many of us we we say we are Christians. We go to our various churches on a weekend, you know, and all of those kind of things. But we need to look at how do we treat one another. You understand? How do we treat each other? You know, do you, the same things I want for myself. Do I want it for somebody else? You know, so we need to go back to respecting the human person, no matter who you are, creed, color, race, political affiliation, sexual orientation, rich, no matter who you are, that we respect each other with that same respect that we, we would want others to respect us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what, what we are called to do as Christians is to love God and love neighbor as, 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 as God has loved us. And I think to a great extent, we have lost that. You know, we see people treat each other badly. People driving and they treat each other badly on the road. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people go to the supermarket, people go to the lines at the banks and those kind of things. And anybody who can cut a line, not even re recognizing who's on the line or if they're elderly persons on the line, you know, to be courteous. And so I think we've lost the sense of respect for each other. And I think this thing will go back when we recognize we need God. Where do you start? I am not sure. But I think we need to start back, you know, as early as kindergarten. Re, um, reigniting that fire in persons. So I think we need to look at, you know, uniform groups, you know, to, 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 to help young persons recognize the things we used to do before, you know, before when, 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 when somebody lo lost a loved one, you know, everybody came together in the community. This one brought in two pounds of ground coffee or a pound of ground coffee, a pound of sugar, a little bottle of generous, uh, this and that. You don't see that anymore. You know, so this caring aspect of our community life, we've lost to a great extent, you know. So I think we need to go back to caring for one another. And if we care for each other, then what you do not want for yourself, you would not want it for others. We've lost, we've dropped the ball, you know, I think to a great extent when it comes to parenting. You know, many of our parents are, are teenagers, you know, young people, and some of them is through no fault of theirs. They do not know better or they are busy at work, you know, trying to make a dollar to take care of their children. And who do we find or what do we find raising those children? You know, their televisions, you give them a, a phone, a, a phone, you give them um, a tablet and that 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 would help raise the children because this would pacify the children this would would you know be what they would would entertain them you know while the parents are busy or, or or away and those kind of things you know so i think too government must look at social programs putting social programs in place as well as the churches and when i again when i say church i'm not referring to the catholic church i am speaking across the board i think you know when when we look at church even as people of god we need to stop attacking each other mm. you find there there are certain denominations you know they're always hitting at the catholic church they're always hitting at some other church we cannot promote a god of love if we continue to do that mm. and you know when we look at the whole thing of ecumenism coming together the various denominations mm -hmm. coming together working together for the greater good i think we need to have a greater emphasis on 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 religions denominations coming together and working up for the greater so, good of humanity i'm so happy father that, that you went down there because ecumenism is is the the path that i was going next and engage me a bit let's talk about the role of of the church because um, you started there and, and, and you just ended there as well. Have we gotten to a point in, 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 in history where we must see the churches working together across, across the board, all denominations rubbing shoulders, sharing suggestions, coming to the national table and presenting the ideas, perhaps even leading the charge, the institution of the church in solving this problem that we currently face? I mean, if we do not work together, you know, basically it is to our detriment. Christ was not about dividing. Christ was about uniting. And if as church, our work is not about uniting ourselves, uniting the people of God, uniting the people of St. Lucia, 
then we have we have we we, we have trouble on our hands you know when we look at the various denominations and we need to be honest with ourselves you know there are more things in these denominations that unites us than divides us mm. and sometimes we choose to focus on what divides us you know and i don't think it is the way to go we need we need to look at the things that what do we have in common you know what what is it that we are about we are about all of us you know with our various denominations we are about inheriting eternal life we are about emulating jesus christ who is our model as christians and what did jesus say jesus says to when he was asked the question what is the greatest commandment to love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul all your strength all your might and he says the second resembles it to love your neighbor as yourself are we doing that as a people as christians are we doing that as a nation are we doing we call ourselves a christian nation fine but as a christian nation are we loving god above everything else and are we loving our neighbors as ourselves excellent excellent um excellent perspective that you've just shared and it it makes you just wonder um exactly where we at and where we need to be headed what we need to be doing um doing now the messaging has to be across across the board um father but but let's speak to perhaps the people who do not attend churches um, and the perpetrators of, of the violent crimes. How, how do we begin our engagement um, with them? I, is there room for some sort of social change within them or, or do we as a society adopt the hard and fast and, and just allow the police to do their work? Well, I think you know that there is room, right? The number of solutions who attend church on a weekend, does church end for them at the church door? Or do they take what they have received and take it to their society? Take it to the people that they interact with, the people that they, they, they line with, the people that they socialize with. And I think that, one, that is one of our problems in St. Lucia because, and, and not problems, but challenges rather, because you know, church does not end at the end of the, at, at the door we are supposed to take our Christianity into, into the society. We are supposed to take our, so our Christianity into the workplaces. So whatever we receive, whether it is on a Saturday or on a Sunday, we go to church. How do we filter that into the society? Mm -hmm. So that the onus now is on us who, who attend church to go and to show love to the people out there who are hurting, to the perpetrators, to show them love, respect, concern, generosity, forgiveness, mercy, you know, to show them these kind of things. And that probably can be a start where it can, it can change the mindset. It can change the perspective because we need to have a change of mindset in St. Lucia. And it, it is on all levels, you know, and civil society has to do its part and, 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 and the church society has to do its part. But we need a change of mindset. Mm -hmm. We open up the phone lines now. Let's let's do so for the next five or ten minutes. Father Albert is speaking, and when Father Albert speaks, and the nation listens, very important discourse now. <clears throat> excuse me, as we engage um, in solutions for our national um, crime crisis that we are currently facing. L let's go back to the church just a bit um, and talk about the role of the church and how the church can, uh, must remain um, and transform and keep its messages up to date, so to speak. Um, because apart from yourself, I think I could only point one finger at perhaps Father, fa Father um, Monsignor Patrick Anthony, uh, not so vocal like you, but traditionally the church's message is, is more of the biblical one. Must those messages also reflect or, or be transformed to cater to the, the other issues which impact your um, your membership as well and the wider society? Well, you know, my thing is, if you, 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 you as, as a priest, as a pastor, as, you know, a, a religious leader, that you come to preach on a weekend and your homilies, your sermons do not intertwine, do not marry with what is happening in society, how do we guide our people? 
How, how do we guide our people? So our homilies must reflect, you know, what is happening in our everyday society. When you go back to to um to to the Bible, when we look at the various narratives that has been given to us, when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus entered the lives and world of the people of his time. And he spoke of, of what was happening in his time. When we look at the writings of, of Paul, especially writing to the various communities, the various churches, the Corinthian church, the Roman church, the, 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 the Ephesian church, you know, all of those kind of things. They were addressing the problems of that time. And we too, as religious leaders, do not have a choice but to address the issues, the social ills of our time. Otherwise, we become irrelevant. Otherwise, we become irrelevant. You know, when you look at it, when you read, you know, the various letters of Paul, you know, and, um, and to see what Paul was addressing, you know, Paul was addressing the, the, the social, the religious issues of, 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 of his time. You know, when you look at the various writings of, of, of other persons as well, you know, Jesus and his ministry, you know, meeting people where they were. Jesus met people where they were. Jesus, Jesus imagine, Jesus called a Matthew who was a tax collector. At that time, that was unheard of, um, a, a tax collector to follow Jesus. Jesus. Jesus called Zacchaeus, come down from the tree, salvation is at your home today. Jesus went out not to those who were righteous, really, but to those who needed the doctor, as, as put in scripture. And we too, our homilies, our sermons, our messages, must address the social and spiritual ills of our everyday. Excellent. And um, beyond the pulpit and outside the halls of the church, yesterday you led, well, on the weekend, you led the parishioners of Babano, um on a motorcade, an anti-crime motorcade. How did the idea come about and, and how impactful was it yes, um, over the weekend? So I must, I must say that the original, original idea was not mine. Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking to a friend of mine and um, about you know, my new assignment and moving to Babono and you know, what has been happening to Babono. And you know, he says, you know, what do you think about this? And, um, you know, he went on an outline. Okay, you probably can do this. And I said, wonderful. And, and you know, the idea was sold to me. So I, I immediately started putting things together and felt, you know, the third Sunday of Advent would be a good, a good, a good weekend to look at it. You know, we, ha we are just coming into the parish. You know, we're just coming off the heels of the national um, um, rally with, with the bishop, and that would be a good a good way to look at it. When I sold it to the parish council of Babono, you know, they were all in for it. The attendance, I must say, was very good. At one mm -hmm. point, we, we counted at least 30 vehicles. We went throughout the community of Babono. Some persons felt, wow, to go to Debara and to um, Bojis, you know, is a bit far. And, you know, this, but we went through the entire parish of Babono and um, we were well received we were well received you know stopping at various points especially at points where persons have been murdered and praying and sprinkling of holy water we went through with the presence of the blessed sacrament mm -hmm. and also the burning of incense throughout our tree so on the truck we had the blessed sacrament we had a coal pot with incense and at the various points when we had a prayer, we had a reflection, and we blessed with holy water. You know, asking God to give us the strength and to help, you know, the persons who have been affected by this, you know, to be strengthened and to, to help them realize you are not in that alone, that your church community is suffering with you, is in that thing with you as well. Um, people are saying we need another one already, mm -hmm. you know, but we need to, we need to strategize and to see how best we can we can tweak and modify to make it better but i think it was it was it was making a statement that we as a parish of the good shepherd and by extension the catholic church in saint lucia we will not stand for violence of any kind of any kind and we will stand in solidarity with our people not only with catholics with saint lucians because we are this thing is affecting all of us yeah. this thing is affecting all of us and you know 
um, you know, we, we, we want to stamp out violence as much as we can, you know, with the help of God. Yeah, I, we know it's only just the start, but you think that message was heard loud and, and clearly this past Saturday? I think so. I think so. Without a doubt, I think so. I mean, when we were driving through, through the community, you know, persons came out of their houses, persons waving their hands, persons taking videos, and I'm sure a number of videos are making the rounds. And I asked persons on Sunday at my at mass to share those videos as far and wide as possible that that message that we as a parish, we are against violence, will circulate. Not only St. Lucia, the Caribbean and the world. Excellent. You know, so I think, you know, that that message was well, well, well received, you know, and that I guess we are going to, we're going to feel the impact of that message probably in weeks to come. Not immediately, yes. but probably in weeks to come. Absolutely. We'll continue to, to monitor um, the, the impact. Barber know a lot different, some similarities, but somewhat different than um, Sufra for say Jacques, um, Father. But what new will you be bringing to the pulpit, or should we expect the same um, no nonsense to the point, um, sincere presentations from you? Well, while while the communities are different, I think the message needs to remain consistent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. The message needs to remain consistent. And the message is not only for persons of Babono. Um, what you would you would have discovered and what I am discovering more and more, the number of persons who follow my mass on a Sunday. Um, I am overwhelmed by the number of non Catholics, you know, who yes. who tune in on a Sunday just to hear the message. And that message will continue to be consistent, will continue to be relevant, because what I want is, I want all of us to, 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 in, to inherit eternal life. I want all of us to treat each other well, no matter your persuasion, your, your religious persuasion, your political persuasion, no matter you know your social status. I want for us to have a beautiful St. Lucia where we treat each other well, where we respect each other, where we treat each other with dignity, and we don't feel that one person is better than another person because they are Catholic or they belong to a certain political party or they belong to a certain um, um, educational level and those kind of things. What I want is for us that, I think it's Paul, Paul VI or one, of our, or one of our popes who says, a civilization of love. A, civiliz a civilization of love where everyone is feel welcome, everyone feels appreciated, and everyone feels valued that we do not leave anybody out. In this, um, our father, um, Albert Smith, review for us the previous five years um, in, in Forse Jacques. I'm sure it's also an opportunity for you to thank the parishioners down there. But how was it for you serving, serving Sufra for St. Jacques? Um, for me, it was my first parish um, as a priest. Um, I worked in Jack Mel, um, Rosa Jack Mel, for four months as administrator when I just became a priest. But then soon after, I was transferred to, to Fon Saint Jacques, um, Sufra for St. Jacques. What persons probably are not aware of, for St. Jacques and Sufra are really different parishes. Mm totally different parishes. You know, um, the people are different, you know, their mindsets are different and those mm -hmm. kind of things. So, you know, it, it, it is really totally two different parishes. You know, Fonce Jacques is a much warmer, smaller, warmer community than Soufre. Soufre is more like commercial, you know, on that level and those kind of things. One of my challenges in trying to, to work with, with Soufre and Fonce Jacques is that for Sufre people, you know, look down on Fonse Jacques people. And I'm not saying that to, to put anybody down in any way. Yeah. That is not what it is. But it is the reality that Fonse Jacques people are looked upon as second class, as, as from the country and Sufre from the town. So that is a challenge. And even when we tried bringing those parishes together, you know, on certain days, like on a Good Friday, the early morning um, way of the cross, we had lots of challenges. We had resistance when it comes to those kind of things, you know. But both parishes, you know, you have beautiful persons who are open, who are who are willing, 
you know, and those kind of things. And like you say, all those persons, you know, who supported me in my ministry there, you know, I want to thank, I want to thank them. They formed the basis of moving forward for me. You know, it is often says that, you know, the first five years of priesthood either make you or break you. And um, I have said that the, my first five years of priesthood, you know, for sure didn't break me. So it has made me who I am today. And I want to thank everyone who has been part of that, you know, but it, it came with its fair share of challenges. Again, the message, you know, my homilies straightforward to the point, you know, um, people were not accustomed to that. And even persons who you expect to embrace it, you know, you could have you could have heard the grumblings, you could have heard the oppositions mm -hmm. and those kind of things, but that did not deter me because I believe if that if if my message was clear, you know, within my heart of hearts, you know, and 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 it is sincere because one of the things that I do, I spend time in preparing my homilies. Mm. I spend time, I do my research, I look at various commentaries, I look at various contributors, and then I I, I bring my my thoughts together. And I try to relate it as much as possible to our own local experiences, yes, yes, you know, yes, in St. Lucia yes. or even in, on, on a Caribbean region. So, I mean, it has been different. Sufre will always be Sufre, you know. And I'm looking for a better, uh, not a better, but I'm looking to a different experience in Babono. I'm looking to something more refreshing, something, you know, more, more um, rewarding, you know, um, moving forward. You know, um, I think, you know, I've started on a very good footing. The people in Babono are very welcoming, very welcome, um, very warm, you know, and um, loads of people are expressing, you know, a willingness to work, um, to do what needs to be done to make this parish go forward. Yeah. I know you wouldn't say it, Father, but, but when we look at your report card um, from Fosse Jacques Souffre over the last five years, um, the first line on the report card would say um, sincerity, and there is an A by that. Um, the next line says your messaging, another A by that. Commitment to the institution of um, the church, another A by that. And um, general service to St. Lucia, another A by that. So the scorecard is clear. Um, you serve well over the past five years, and we look forward to, to what um, the years coming in Babuno would um, bring for you and um, the Catholic Catholic Church. Um, finally, let me allow you to share your message to, to our nations in Lucia. We stare down a very um, difficult period. We're staring down a barrel of a national crime crisis. People are in fear. Um, what say you to, to the lawmakers and to the ordinary man on the street um, as we confront this very difficult situation? You know, one of the things that I remain true to, um, and I've lived out of St. Lucia for a while, you know, I, I lived in Grenada, I lived in Trinidad, I lived in Jamaica, you know, I lived in Rome, you know, all having to do with my formation for priesthood. And I always look forward to coming back home. I say to people, when I was in Trinidad, when I was in Rome, I listened to Radio St. Lucia at the time. I listened to um, Radio Caribbean at the time, you know, because I always wanted to remain calm, to remain connected to home. Um, home is where the heart is, and I'm St. Lucian to the bone. All I want is for us to love one another as Christ has loved us. I want St. Lucia to be the best place. So I'm St. Lucian before anything else. And even before I was a Catholic, I was born mm -hmm. into, into being a St. Lucian. And, you know, one of the things that pains my heart, and I said it yesterday, you know, during the notices of church, is that we, tomorrow we celebrate National Day. And um, as, as, as a church, you know, we have the parish of Miku, which is our national shrine. You know, um, you know um, the Feast of St. Lucy we celebrate tomorrow. But I've heard a number of activities all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I have not heard one activity on a civil level that is inviting St. Lucians to find themselves in Miku mm -hmm. to pray for the country, for the state of disarray that we are in right now. And I'm very disappointed with that. Yeah. I am very disappointed with that. I am saying all well and good to have your, your activities to mark you know, National Day. 
But where is God in all of that? And that speaks volume for me. That speaks volume. Where is God in all of that? So I want to call to our leaders, those who are planning all the activities on a national level, on a, on a, on a community level, in the future, let us engage our leaders. I think tomorrow should be a day when we call all our people, all our denominations to, na to a day of national prayer or a morning of national prayer because where we are at now as a nation, when it comes to crime and violence, I do not think any of us are happy with it. To the ordinary person, I want to say, be of courage. Be of courage. Stand up for justice. Stand up for what is right. You know, there's a song that we sing. Stand together for what you believe. Work for what must be done. Love each other in all that you do till all my people are one. And I want to invite solutions. Let us stand together for what we believe. Work for what must be done. Restoring peace. Stamping out violence till all St. Lucians again feel safe. Yeah. I want to wish everyone a happy National Day. And it is not too late to make that effort to be in Miku tomorrow. We start at 10 a.m. Let us go and pray for our nation that the Lord would stamp out the violence in this nation that we will feel safe again. Yeah. Excellent, Father. But two messages just before I allow you to go. Um, somebody's saying there is not a national call for people to be in Miku praying for the nation tomorrow because apparently we are a block of society. Um, sad, 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 sad. It is true. Sad, it is sad, true. Sad, but sad. as a church, as a Catholic church, we have been announcing that yes. you know we were inviting as many people okay. as possible tomorrow to Miku so we can pray for the nation. So um, as, as an archdiocese, we have we, we've sent out that message and it's been um, read in our churches excellent but we are saying i think the writer is saying as a as a nation on a whole it seems like we're a block of society so whether or not it's king or, or barren people's attention will be focused at um at, 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 at the gatherings tonight and the watering holes um sadly G give us a the writer, preview. The writer is very correct. Yeah, give us a, a preview, Father Albert, of um, Sunday's sermon. It will be broadcast here on Hot 7 TV. As I say to you, that Gloria Janai is saying good morning to you. She's from Force Jacques, Father Albert, and she's saying, Yes, we love and appreciate you, um, Father Albert. The message from Gloria Janai. Uh, what should we expect this coming Sunday? Well, this coming Sunday, um, to be honest, I've not even looked at the readings because I just, I do, we just finished yesterday. I usually look at my readings by Monday evening into Tuesday morning. But again, you know, the church in the mode that, is, that, it, that it is in is in a mode of preparation. Preparation on twofold. To commemorate Christmas. And then we can only commemorate and celebrate Christmas if we are about peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Mm -hmm. So that message, that thread will continue. And the church also invites us you know, in the same preparation mode to be able to prepare for our own last day on the face of the earth, preparing for our death, you know, to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, it, it, it ties back to the whole thing of loving God and loving neighbor and treating each other well, you know, treating each other well. That is what it is about. Why would you not want to treat somebody well and then an abrupt end to that um, Father Albert interview. Do me a favor, Dan. Let's reconnect with Father Albert just for two minutes. I, I don't want to end like this. Um, I, I want to appreciate all the blessings that, that are headed my way. So I, I don't want to abruptly end my conversation um, with such an important man of the cloth uh, as Father Albert Smith is. So, so allow us just two minutes. We reconnect with Father Albert. Um, who should be on momentarily. In just a while, um, we have uh, former magistrate, T. Nigel Tuse, who will join us as well to wrap up this morning's programming. Father Albert, welcome back. We had an abrupt end. I was saying I can't miss any of my blessings and, and um, allow you to go <laughs> so abruptly. Right. Thank you. Thank you.
I think you're giving us some insight to um, the weekend so, so much. I think you're saying the messaging of, of love uh, will continue to... to, to yes, to the love. message of love will continue. The message of preparing, the message of peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Because, you know, we one of the things I keep on saying is that we look forward to Christmas, but Christmas is not about food and drink. It's not about painting the house and changing the furniture and all of those kind of things. Christmas is bringing Christ, allowing Christ to be born anew in our hearts day after day after day. You know, we've lost this whole thing of, 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 of moving from home to home on Christmas. When I was growing up as a little boy, that's what we knew. Moving from home to home, you know, visiting. And this, it was one of the times of the times of the year where people made a lot of peace with each other because you could have been vexed with the person for the whole year. But Christmas time, you reach in at the person's home, eh? They wouldn't dare embarrass you. They wouldn't dare make you feel bad. You know, we need to return to these kind of um, these kind of, of 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 activities. You know, that we may we may we express love and concern to each other. Let us stop. You know, I we be, we live in a very judgmental society, and it's one of the things that is destroying us. We are too judgmental of each other. I I often say that everyone is walking a road and fighting a battle that many of us do not know of and all we need to do is to allow people to be let them live their lives and support them but we are we we have become a very judgmental society um saint Teresa, mother Teresa of calcutta says if we judge people we have no time to love them. And what we want to do is to love people mm -hmm. and not judge them. Excellent. Excellent point to end. Father Albert Smith, thanks for coming on this morning. Thanks for your service. We'll, we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you very much. And I want to wish all St. Lucians a happy National Day and a bright and prosperous Christmas and a New Year. Excellent. His sermons are broadcast this and every Sunday exclusively on Caribbean Hot 7 TV. Be sure to join us, Father Albert Smith, uh, my special guest this hour on Beyond the Headlines. Stay with us. We'll take a short commercial break next. I'll bring on former magistrate T. Nigel to say we're getting ready to preview two exciting new additions to the platform next season. One is um, Crime Watch. It will not be hosted by me. It's going to form part of the morning programming, but we're going to bring on an expert to host um, this uh, very special feature looking into next season, Crime Watch. Dean Nigel Tusia will host another one. She'll tell us more next. Stay with us.